Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 29th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a very interesting and timely diary by Xavier. Xavier is looking closer at the WinRAR vulnerability, CVE 2023-38831, how it's being exploited and how you can detect it. To detect it, Xavier uses zipdump.py, a quick uh, Python script that uh, analyzes zip files. And the trick that's being abused here in order to exploit the vulnerability is a space at the end of a directory name and a space ahead of the extension. So the file that uh, Xavier sipped here as part of his exploit archive is test.txt space slash test.txt space dot bat. And that leads then to the execution of the code in the dot bat file. In addition to use this uh, proof of concept exploit in order uh, to show how exploitation works here, Xavier also is looking at a uh, exploit that he found on VirusTotal to show well it works for real samples. And then also how to go further and extract the actual script being executed. And Juniper, a little bit more than a week ago, did release a bulletin with an out-of-cycle fix for June OS. This particular bulletin does fix a number of vulnerabilities. The trick here is that by themselves, some of these vulnerabilities may not sound that bad, but together they can actually then be exploited to gain full unauthenticated remote code execution. I mentioned yesterday how hard it can be to just look at a CVSS score and figure out how severe a vulnerability is. Of course, there's nothing better than to bring home the severity of a vulnerability than an actual proof of concept exploit. And we now have that thanks to Watchtower Labs. And exploitation is actually not all that terribly difficult. It is essentially an arbitrary remote code upload vulnerability that then leads uh, to execution once that code is being loaded via the web browser. The trick here is that a PHP config file is uploaded that will then execute the malicious code via the auto prepend file directive. So certainly make sure your Juno S devices are patched and your admin interfaces are protected. And Microsoft today announced that the Exchange Server Cumulative Update 14 that should be released soon will enable extended protection by default. Extended protection was introduced about a year ago, August 2022, with an update and has been optional so far. So you had to enable it specifically. The problem with this is that if you do have an older exchange server, so something that did not have the August 2022 security update installed, well, uh, you may break server to server communication if you enable extended protection. So with enabling it by default, uh, be ready here for some disruption. Read the note from Microsoft. It has additional details. They, of course, highly recommend you do enable extended protection even before this cumulative update 14 is released. And with all the problems, of course, we had with Exchange Server and exploitation of these vulnerabilities being on August 2022 security update or later is pretty much mandatory anyway at this point, I would think. The update itself will only enable the extended protection on the server you install it. There are other scripts available that allow you to in enable the extended protection feature on multiple servers sort of across your network. And I talked yesterday about yet another malicious NPM package. Well, 
npm is not alone here even secure languages like rust do suffer from the problem that you have occasional malicious packages being published latest example was documented by phylum now phylum found a rust package that essentially just communicates back to the attacker the similar things that we talked about yesterday with the npm package interestingly that the package is just called postgres so kind of trying to emulate a database no sql at the end just two s's but close enough that a developer may install this package by mistake also interesting here, what do you do to protect yourself from malicious packages? Well, you install a package. Phylum does have a CLI tool that will help you sort of check your packages during a build to make sure that they don't exhibit any malicious behavior. Well, that's it for today. And by the way, yesterday I mentioned that there won't be a podcast on Monday because of Labor Day and also because I'm traveling. Well, I will be traveling to London, England, and you will be able actually to hear me and to speak to me and actually see me in the evening. There is a community evening on Monday evening. I believe that's uh, September 4th. I'll leave a link in the show notes. You need to pre-register, but the event itself is free. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.